Hey there, good morning. Welcome back to the live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz. This is Fritz and Friends. And uh, if you're watching the recording over there on YouTube, hello future people, good to see you. Let me know who wins the World Series this year. I've got a couple bets I'd like to place. Um, today is August 7th, 2018. Thanks so much for joining me today. We're going to be writing a little bit of code. We're going to be having some fun. I'm a program manager from Microsoft, so um, I'm really familiar with Visual Studio and .NET, and that's what we're going to be using today. Hello there, everybody. Stool Penner. And let's see. Let's run down the list here. Zabehi. Uh, Mordecai Zuber. Hey, how you doing there? Brave Cobra. Good to see you. A lot of chatter on our GitHub repositories over the past few days, and I'm thrilled to see that. Check digits. Notification said there would be models introduced today on the stream. And I'm hoping for Cindy Crawford. La-dee-da, look at that. Not quite. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? ADM Schneider says, and I like this question ahead of time. I build a Visual Studio add-in that shows the concrete types of var, the variable declarations using that var keyword. Uh, would that be something useful for the stream? I think that's a pretty neat add-on that for any developer that's learning, even for folks who are teaching, um, teaching new developers, I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, let's see what else. Hello, fellow meatbags. Good uh, um, afternoon, fellow meatbags. Good afternoon, Mike. Mike Jim W. Welsh Ronaldo is here. Um, and Joker. Good to see you. Hey, friends. Isn't she retired by now? Uh, I haven't seen her active out there, but there's there's certainly a few folks out there still working. If they're not hanging out on Instagram. Uh, let's go over. Let's start up some music to code by here in the background. Um, today I'm going to play... Um, let's play this song that was originally called Gold. Here we go. I like it. This is Music to Code by, it's written by our friend Carl Franklin. It's designed to get us in the groove, to get you focused. You can check out all of his great music at mtcb.pwop.com. And he's actually about to release his 17th song in this collection. Each one of the songs is about 25 minutes long, the perfect length of a Pomodoro, if you use the Pomodoro technique to be productive. So listen to a song, and when the song is over, take a five minute break, come back and get focused again and listen to the next song. Really great stuff. I'm thrilled to be able to play it in the background here on our stream, on our show together, so that we can write code and be hyper-focused. Thanks so much, Carl. We really appreciate you allowing us to play some of this music here in the background. Um, I want to make sure it's not too loud. This one's a little bit louder than I expected. Let me just dial that back a smidge. Yeah, it's just a little loud. There we go. Cool. Heidi Klum. All right, we're not going to spend the whole time talking about, about the ladies. Ola to all says, Fakurad. Hello, hello. And of course, I want to make sure that the ladies are welcome here as well. Um, in, in the chat room. So... Um, good evening from Thailand, says Zabehi. Hey, good evening. Thanks so much for dialing in. My gosh. And uh, there's Oz Coder coming in from, I'm, I'm assuming, from, um, right, Australia, New Zealand. So I've, I introduced the, uh, the loyalty badges, and you'll see them in the chat room. So new, new subscribers get the black coffee mug, which doesn't look too good on my background there. I'm wondering if I need to, if I switch that to a white mug, it's going to look bad on the white background. If I switch it to a gray mug, it's going to disappear on that gray background that I have here in the video. Hmm. Hmm. We'll figure that out. There must be another color that we can use. But it becomes, um, I think it's, is it blue at, at three months and then red? And then it turns gold at a year. 
Let me just look over here. I have it. I have the, those settings right here. Ta -ta -ta -ta. Loyalty badges. We don't need no stinking badges. There we go. Black, then it turns red, then it turns blue. It's red at three months, blue at six months, gold for a year. Gold, yellow, whatever. So there you go. So, thanks so much to our friends that are hosting us. LM Orchard, Jeffrey Huntley. I appreciate you helping out here. Good morning, Triple Diamonds. All right. I am going to head over here to my dashboard. Ancient Coder. Hey, not one iota. There's a friend of mine. We hang out on the PH16 streams a bit. Um, okay. What do we have here? Hi, Jeff. I asked a question a few days ago about why to use hash set collection instead of list. Do you need to override get hash code for the comment class because apparently hash set stores object hash as a key? Um, we're... You don't need to override get hash code uh, because get hash code will will try to um, will hash the object that it's storing by default. If we wanted to make sure that we were hashing the exact comment, the text of the comment, and we wanted that to be the hash, right? So we wanted to prevent people from from posting first, right? So you know how people like to do that in the comments. First post, first comment. If we wanted to prevent that, we could create, we could say that our hash on our comment is actually the hash of the comment body, right? So we override instead of it being over the entire object being serialized. So that would be a little bit beneficial there. Hey, Iota, thanks so much for hosting. And Dev Chatter hosting with 17 folks over there. All right. Um... All right, so I want to head over and we want to do some work today on our core wiki project. Now, as always, all of the code that we write here on stream, it's open source. It's freely available for you to check out, for you to interact with, um, learn, take a copy of it, you know, apply some changes, break things, have fun. The, you know, this, um, it's not in a production space yet we've been adding some enhancement here that i think are getting us pretty close to to saying let's deploy let's deploy a reference copy of this i think we're we're getting there we're not quite there yet but we're i think we might be there at some point in the fall here based on the speed at which we go through some of these things um we have these four projects that are in various states that folks have been interested in contributing to, creating pull requests, and interacting with. Hey, Code Rushed is, is hosting us with uh, a few viewers. Thanks so much, Mark. And uh, Mark and Rory over at Qu uh, Code Rushed. Easy for me to say. Um, they do a show three times a week talking about um, building JavaScript games right now. All these people hosting with actual viewers, and I'm just over here being the hewest with the fewest. <laughs> Nah, we're okay. It's all right. So, um, these are four projects that are in various states that folks said, oh, I'd like to work on this. And they started and they're, they're hanging out there. We, we need to get back in and give these a little bit of a push. Um, this one in particular, this first start wizard, where we want to kind of force... We want to force whoever installs CoreWiki to get a good experience configuring some of those application options that you're going to need to build a content management system. And and we've moved in the right direction here. Um, and there's some things here around database user and first start configuration from the command line. We need a a, a either a um, a set of user interfaces or a set of pages that'll pop up first if the application isn't configured that will allow us to write those settings into the application. So there's a little bit that we need to still figure out before this is in a good place and and I think um, we'll see people downloading and deploying instances of CoreWiki wherever they need, wherever you need a content management system. 
because people need content management systems. Um, so I want to create an issue that that talks about that and make sure it gets added in. Um, we never finished this one. We'll come back to that around extensibility. So I'm just going to create another issue. Um, first install user interface. User interface. User dash interface? I think so. Um, when CoreWiki is first installed, a, uh, a wizard should open in the browser that um, leads, leads, uh, leads the installer through a series of uh, configuration questions. To ensure proper configuration. There we go. Now I think this is, right, this is kind of the base of what that first start wizard should do. Um, this is an enhancement. Certainly help is wanted for this. All right. User space interface versus user dash interface. As long as you're consistent, who cares? I like it. I kind of agree. Check Digit says, I love the GitHub project tools. They have more work to do, especially around milestones, but they're extremely useful. I agree. Um, I think Visual Studio Team Services has, has really great project management tools. Um, and, and with the acquisition of GitHub, I, I hope that there's... There's a place that we can get to where we can have public repositories and be able to have that that rich project management set of tools kind of working together across the two services. I think that would be really cool. Okay. Um, so that's all I wanted to say about this one because I was thinking about this this morning and I saw... Who was it? Somebody put a post up about their NuGet dependency analyzer. And um, it was really great. They were using Miguel Diacasa's GUI um, text, right? Miguel Diacasa, and I, I think it's called, is it, is it GUI? Is that the name of his project? GUI CS, here it is. So, um, Miguel wrote this console-based user interface that allows you to build that. that. That feels a little over the top for what we need for CoreWiki because, face it, we're building a web application. But I saw this type of user interface and I kind of got inspired. I was like, oh, that's what we need. We need a user interface when it starts that says, I need to build your configuration. And um, I think this is a really cool approach to being able to build that that command line user interface. No, is the hat? Oh, well, here, let's do this. Now you can't. Now it doesn't matter. Ha ha. That should be a little bit better. Um, so Miguel's done a, a really neat job with building a complete user interface that runs on the command line using that n curses. Um, there's a little bit of... Uh, you're confused with how it's happening. So I've got green lights behind me to light up my green screen. And um, it's... I'm getting some reflection off of the wall in front of me is what's happening. And it's magic. So that's what's that's what Miguel is doing, and that's what kind of inspired me this morning. Um, now I want to talk about I want to talk about the models that we currently have in CoreWiki and fixing up separating this out so that we have um, 
we have a clear separation from Entity Framework because I really want to be able to bring in Cosmos DB or Azure Table Storage as an alternative uh, storage mechanism for these articles. Because I think there's um, there's some really cool things that we can do there. And I'm wearing my, my Overwatch hat today because I got a brand new, check that out. Got a brand new Reaper t-shirt I'm thrilled with. So I thought, ah, we got to complete the look. You got to have the Overwatch hat to go with the Reaper t-shirt. And uh, I've got this weird orange reflection. That's not too bad. Um, at least it's not Hanzo. Oh, I see what we have there. Is that is that a Genji main or? Anyways. 3115 is where the follower count is. We are just over just under 1900 on the 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 rainbow beard challenge so if we get there by the middle of october we're gonna dye my beard and um if we can get there by the beginning of october i'll do it for twitchcon so all right um here we go we have one poll request hanging out here. Uh, Chris, CMJ Chris Jones, um, put some updates in to fix dark theme CSS. Um, overflow visible background color white on the dark theme? Not quite sure. And then on the headers, made the border, instead of black, made it white? I'm um, let's see what we got here. Look at that, you can see through my hat still. Ugh. Fine. We'll switch to that Overwatch hat, and now you can't see through it. Better. Alright. Um I wanna see exactly what this is because I'm not sure I, uh, this initial making the background color white on a dark theme, I'm not sure I agree with that. Let's take a look. So I will grab a copy of this to run locally. I don't have that open. Um, let me close this. Nope, don't need that. All right. Uh, dev core wiki make sure I have the latest the white was on an HR so that's not a big deal depending on how they get used it what there was let me scroll up here so that's on an HR mm, but the border going to white on the uh, oh wait input type button button block right so this is on a button making the border white Card footer class having a white border. Badge dark. He went to straight RGB on some of these. So let's see what let's see what this looks like. All right, uh, and we will dot net run. All right. Good. And we are on localhost 8081. Localhost 8081. Forgot the HTTPS. I wish the browser would do that for me. All right. So I'm going to change over to dark theme. So th the white border there is what I see as new. If I go over to latest changes. So... That's not too bad. And in particular, I believe it was in the user, one of the user admin pages. Is where we saw a little bit of that black theme, not... That's pretty good. Alright. 
And if I go over to my profile and I look at roles and permissions, that looks pretty good too. All right. I'm good with that. Um, but he made... Uh, is Smab out there watching? He made those changes in the Theme Dark CSS, not in the SCSS that runs that. Um, let's open CoreWiki. So next time that that SCSS gets merged, it's um, it's going to disappear. We're going to lose those changes. So let's go into dubdub root. If I go into CSS, right there's theme dark, and Chris made the changes in this file, not in the SCSS. Yeah. It's the right thing to do, but it's in the wrong file. Right? So this HR, overflow visible background color white. Right? Where's HR? I don't I don't even see it in here. So theme dark when it gets turned into theme dark CSS and it gets all this other stuff applied to it. Right, he added background color. Where is that HR theme in this that HR rule in this cl in this um yeah, in this SCSS. Uh da -da -da -da. No. Right, that's the stuff for the diff. I think you're right, RH Sumner. Because the CSS files are an artifact. Um, let me see. So the CSS files are... Right? They're, they're built on the bundle, aren't they? I'm trying to remember where it, where it is that they're being built. I don't see it there. No, we're not doing it in package. If it's not being done in bundler and minifier, and it's not being done in package. There they are. So input file is theme dark SCSS, and it's outputting theme dark CSS. So we've got all these variables declared. Input, import custom variables. Ah, there we go. Import bootstrap. And then import custom styles. The downside to excluding CSS is less visibility as to what a... <laughs> what a change in SAS did, yeah. Um, yeah. So if I, if I remember my... SAS correctly, um, the HR rule, it should merge it if we have background color white in the SAS. And I don't want to lose the rest of his rules that he put together here. So I'm going to put this on the side and bring up Visual Studio over here. Five Hararier, or is that Shararier? I don't know how to pronounce that. Welcome, thank you for following. All right, um, so if I put that HR rule in here, if I remember my SAS, it should just merge those rules. So I'm going to add HR down here and paste in background color white. And the other one, this is this is at line 3068. Da, 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 da. 3068 here. 
That should be border dash color. Oh, no, wait, wait. Hang on. Not a valid value for border. Why doesn't it like that? Stream latency is excellent. Fantastic. Glad to hear it's doing well today. So this is the card border. So if I come back over here, where's dot card? Don't say it. So this imports, well, okay, so there's card BG. Now where's it actually, um, da, 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 da. node modules, bootstrap, SAS bootstrap. Um, <laughs> um, let me pin this again so I can see. We're importing custom styles. Right, these are the couple things that are custom we're including. And here's custom variable. Override bootstraps variables here, so you'll find them in blah, 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 blah. Okay. Hey, NAR003. All right, so that's the card background, and that's going to be merged with bootstrap, SCSS, bootstrap. Let's bring up that file from the node modules. C dev core wiki. Uh -huh. Bootstrap SCSS Bootstrap. Let's see if I can just... No, don't do that. Bad idea. Bad idea. All right. I just want to open this. There we go. Import... Oh, dear Lord. Okay. I wanted to look at card. So I'm going to import... I'm going to open card. There we go. So there's the border dollar card border color so we should be able to take right this solid rgba and put that in as a card border color and use that All right, let's see where else. So down here, this is card footer. So in the card footer, where'd it go? Card footer, border top. Card footer, border, border top is card dash border dash color, which we've already assigned. So we're good there. This is badge dash dark background color. Uh. Um, hello, all of you. Hello, Akira. Just got here. Add dollar HR border color variable for the first change. Um, okay, so I'll get rid of that. Dollar HR border color, and it was um, white. So we'll do that. Um, <laughs> where'd it go? So down in here, we were at this one badge dash dark. So here's badge. Badge dash dark. No. What do you mean there's no badge dash? Oh, here we go. For each color value, include badge dash variant dollar value. Ugh. Um, it has just the variables you can override in variables SCSS. Um...
Okay. So I need to find... No. So badge dark. Right. It's including badge dash variant dollar value. Well, what, where's badge variant? Da, da, da. That's the only place it is. Where's that under mix-ins? There it is. Mix-in badge variant color. Color Y-E-I-Q background. Okay. And that's where it's setting the background color. So how do I... So Akira, we're we're merging this change. The, this is the one pull request that we had out there, and the change was making it. This made changes directly to CSS instead of the SAS files. So I'm going through and just updating the SAS files with the changes that were suggested here, and then we're going to go over and start talking about that architecture and making those appropriate changes to to build those models. So we always merge our our pull request before we get started in the project of the day. These are folks who've taken some time to contribute, so we're gonna take a look here and see what we got. So much white. Oh, you're right, I normally have dark theme in Visual Studio. Um, you're right. I was doing some recording this week, so I went to light background, so we'll go back to dark here. There we go. So my challenge is, right, I want to, oh, we can't see exactly where this is, but it looks like it's in that same badge dark area where it's setting up the badges. Um, how it, right, color YIQ, I'm not familiar with that, and it's taking in this dollar BG, which is color in dollar theme dash colors well where's dollar theme dash colors if I look at theme dark okay so dollar theme so this is dash dark so where's th is that custom variables there's dark and okay, zero six one nine three five, and and he's changed it to RGB one seventy three one seventy three. Also specify bang default to pick up any SCSS set earlier. Where where are you referring? I should pick up bang default. What what I'm looking at. Right, I need to look at this file where it's changed. Um, yep, view the whole file. This is a really big CSS file, dear lord. And it's not showing me where it's changed now, I, right? I don't have those diff marks, it's just here's what's changed. Ugh. So it's just these last ones. Well, no. Okay, so the card footer picked that up, but badge dark, RGB 173173. Notice we've already overridden dollar dark, so it should show. Yes. So dollar dark is right there. It's gray 800, which is 343A40, which is right there. And he's suggesting for the badge, we should go white and this RGB here. Hmm. I'm not going to experiment with this any further because it's, it's taking just a little bit too long for me to go through right now. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to push back on this. I'm not going to accept the pull request just yet. And I'm going to suggest let's update that SAS, that SCSS file. Um, this looks nice, but you've updated the CSS files and not the SCSS. Uh, next time we rebuild, the CSS will be overwritten by the compiled SCSS. Let's get the theme dark SCSS updated and this will um, and this will persist across builds. Cool. If you want, I'll fix it up later. It looks like he's swapped it around. Yeah, yeah. Was that a pull request due to an issue? Yeah. Um, in issue 251, the My Roles page. So when I this page here, My Roles and Permissions, it was all white background. It didn't look quite right. If I change over to the Ouch theme, it's not too bad. Um, let me um, go back to this. Let me show you what it looks like currently. So I'll refresh. So if I go over to dark, say it doesn't look quite right. Why is there an ouch theme? Asks Tizarnal. Um, it's strictly a demo. It's it's to show what you can do. Um, I certainly welcome if other folks want to if if there's a theme that that you'd like if you want to do where's my sunglasses if you want to do black on black on slate black and make it look like and call it champions club go for it um man i love picking picking on doc um if you want to, right, if you want to do some other theme, if maybe your organization has theme colors that are whatever, it's strictly a demo to show what you can do. It's just another CSS file out there that you can include and do something with, right? We're trying to show a little bit of the power of what's possible. So, um, not too bad. All right. Um, let's go back and let's talk about the models and some of these things that we want to change. Um, for the dark theme, I could even argue that the the text block here for the for the editor, we may want to force this to be a specific color as well, a darker color, maybe a gray background, maybe so it looks a little bit like this as a as a dark color. Philly Adam, yeah, too white. I. That's what I'm thinking benefits. This feels just a little bit white here. Um, new page using some new components, which have to be tweaked to show nicely. I could have changed all the variables, but it's time-consuming. We weren't using much bootstrap at the start. Good point. Very good point. Um, no, this is this is the Philadelphia Fusion. They, they're a professional Overwatch team. So, um, but I am going to go back to the default... It's just clean, white, fresh. Um, so that's what's that's what we're trying to address here with this issue. So, right, I'm back in my dev branch. Back in my dev branch. All right. Which one? Theme dark. Uh, reset hard. Good. Now. I wanted to talk about the models. I wanted to focus on trying to trying to get so introduce some domain objects to get those direct references of entity framework out of the project. So I have I have a bunch of branches. I'm going to go into my project new data branch, and I have tab completion because I'm using the posh git plugin here. Rainbow style. 
Yeah. Activated so it affects all controls as well. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. But rainbow style to match the upcoming beard. Hey, we got a long way to go here. That's, it's, it's, uh, carry the one. What, like 10 weeks out that we're looking here? And, and we need to get almost 2,000 folks. I think my beard is pretty safe. All right. Let's, um, let's take a look, see here at, well, first off, I feel like I should merge dev. Let's see what we got here. Not too bad. One conflict on the model's article object. Let's take a look at that. I bet it's not too bad here. Yeah, 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 I know. I, I don't, I don't want that right now. I want it to go away. Uh, here we go, article. I, I, not now, go away, shoo. So here, um, we have a constructor. It takes a topic and an author of arth author name and the ID. Um, I think I want the current change. Oh, you know what? It can't take an author because author doesn't exist in this project. Aha. All right. I will comment that out. Yeah. For right now. Awesome. For dark and light mode, it could be just a styling thing. It should be just a styling thing. Uh huh. -huh. Merged from dev. Huh? I thought I added that. Did I miss something? Is there something else here? No, that's the only one. Not now. Uh, yeah, I tried to add this. Merged from dev. Good. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I want to start getting rid of direct references to the entity framework objects. Now, I still have... And I'm not really going to get rid of it. I think we kind of are stuck with this one. The um, the users. Now why am I dependencies? I think we're okay there. Um, for identity, right? Our user object there is. It's not something that I want to muck with. I'm just going to leave it the way it is, and kind of let that do its thing out there. Um. Now, I think I think the more and more that we look at um, pulling these models out so that they are domain models, more, more domain model and less entity framework model, uh, there's a lot of freedom it's going to give us. But it's also going to basically touch all of our application and put us into a place where hopefully... Our database interactions, our data, I don't want to say database anymore, but our data storage interactions become a lot simpler. So I'm going to close out these pages here. And I want to reach down into, we have this core project right now, and it has a models. And we have these model objects. And this is, this is one of the things that Julia had suggested to us. And right now, we see these entity framework concerns on top of these things. But I believe we also see them in our, right? Do we, don't we see these? Our article DB context, right? This references those objects and they're not in this project. 
they're over in the other project. So now, right, I've got this weird place where I've got Entity Framework stuff here in this data project. I've got some DTOs. These things are going to be common in our pages. They aren't something that are going to be shared and used across other um, other projects. I don't use article create DTO in a notification or in a unit test. That's only used to go from the page to the browser and from the browser back to the page. So what I'm what I'd like to do is I'd like to take these objects here in our models inside this data project. I want to move these into the web project because these are exactly uh, uh, is, is that quint int foo quint int foo quint int foo let me know how to pronounce that but yes this this isn't the right place for it i i agree with you there um it, we and you blow it. we blew it putting them there they work but for the purposes of what we're trying to do to pull this out, to separate these and, and reuse these objects and make it a little bit more consistent, this is the wrong place for our DTO objects. Um, I want to turn this project, this CoreWiki data project, into CoreWiki data dot entity framework. So only our entity framework concerns are in this project. Our domain objects go into our core project, along with our interfaces for our repositories, and we still leave our concrete implementations that use Entity Framework here in this, in this project. Models need to get into a core location. Yes, that's, that's where I was going. So first things first, I'm going to take this models, these DTOs, because they're not, they're... Right, these things go back and forth to the browser. So I'm gonna move them into the web project. Now, can I just cut this? Maybe I can just cut this. And I'm gonna paste it up in here. Is that gonna just work? Is that gonna just work? Maybe? Hey, hey. all right. So instead of this being CoreWiki data models, Right, I'm going to do a control shift F and I'm going to change this do, to do a replace in files. And I'm going to search just in this project and I'm going to replace CoreWiki data models with CoreWiki uh, it's just CoreWiki models, isn't it? All right. Right, replace that one, replace that one, this one. Good, good. Good. Let her rip. I'm pretty good with that. All right. Close all. Now, the models are all here. These simple DTOs that just live over here. Oh, hang on. Hang on. I would call CoreWiki data CoreWiki persistence. Well, hang on. Um... I'm going to end up renaming this project to CoreWiki Data Entity Framework is what I believe. I'm going to take this models object and move it over here because these models are specific to Entity Framework. Right, if you... Now I'm going to take this and in this project I'm going to rename it from CoreWiki Core Models to CoreWiki data models. Yep. Okay. So now my entity framework context that's here, this one, now properly has references to these things because they're inside this project. Now if I look at the dependencies, what do we got here? Meh. Whatever. Um... So now this really is just entity framework stuff here. Now what's in security? 
Core wiki identity context wiki user seed default admin user. Oh, so it looks like somebody did start moving this over here. Looks like Chris started moving this over here. Not sure I like them there. Only because... Now let's see where it goes. Uh, data shorter. Sounds cool to me. I thought all the files were renamed to have a uniform DTO. They were renamed. Right, but... It's like I have to... Rename them twice to kind of force it to take it. Otherwise, it doesn't actually... Right, so if I force these... Come on. Which feels so weird, man. Whew, I don't like that 30 up. Um, what do we have here? Yeah, lots of move and deletes. Let's just get that saved so we have it. But you can see the renames. All right, good. So my these objects, I think, are in the right place. Now... I want to rename this from corewiki.data to corewiki.data.entityFramework. Everything is wired up through DI, so there's no bleeding of EF into everything else. There is. There is. It's all about models and entity framework today. Yes. Uh, look at that. SMB has a red mug. All right. Yes, that is what I'm moving to. Thank you. Um, yes, yes, because when we look at things like our pages, right, it creates a bad example. Let's look at details. When it fetches the object, when it fetches the article, the article that comes out is a um, data models article. Yes, is an entity framework object. Which means, right, so I'm tightly coupled to that. I don't want it to be a de uh, an entity framework object. So, um, all right, so I've removed, I think I've, I've settled where these things live now. I want to rename this project um, to corewiki.data.entityFramework to indicate that it is, this is where, this is, Entity framework specific features. Uh, Gossamer Games. Thank you so much for the follow. So I'm going to do that. And so these interfaces, I don't want these interfaces here for these various methods. I want these interfaces actually in my core project so that this is reusable across various data interaction, um, various data, data interactions, right? Whether I'm using Entity Framework, Cosmos DB, Mongo, Postgres. Postgres you can use with Entity Framework, but uh, I want to simplify this and put it somewhere where we can reuse it. Now look at this, corewiki.data.data.interfaces. Do 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 do. That's a mistake. Um, strange uncle, welcome. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us here. I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Corewiki data dot persistence. If there was only ever going to be one way that we persisted data, sure, but there isn't. 
I want to be able to have entity framework. I want to be able to put in additional providers. So those different providers will be corewiki.data.foo. So different. So we'll make this corewiki.core.interfaces. So we have our article repositories. Now you can already see all these article objects don't exist in this project. So it's kind of, I don't know what to do. Those go in core wiki data EF. Your model should be in, yes. So is that, let me make sure I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, is that JAWF BBG? Um, yes, so my, my domain models that I'm going to use, I'm going to put into core, and then I'm going to have a translation from those domain models to my entity framework models that occurs. And that translation is an entity framework concern. The website shouldn't care about that. Um, I'll take entity framework over and hibernate, but I have plenty of frustrations with entity framework at times. The entity framework has its limits. There's there's a there's a, a point where where you can push it a little bit far in the abstraction. My EF models I, I would I usually call DAOs, DAO data access objects. Okay. Um, would you use areas to separate feature as opposed to folder structure in pages? I'm using, so and that's a good question, Benefice. Let me just take a second to answer that. I would, I use areas to separate um, units of functionality. And when I say units, in this case, for this project, um, the, the viewing and the management of of um, articles. That's my primary unit. That's the one that just about everybody is going to use. However, user administration is a different area, that management of identity. So let's put that user administration somewhere else. I think there's an area that we may see come along maybe three, six months out around um, article workflow and um, some of the interesting things that may come out of that, that would be another area. I, I don't fully know what that's going to be, but we can isolate that and put it in a different area and keep it um, protected. So, yeah, it's... It, it's um, you might hear folks refer to them as modules of an application. Daniel Plomp, thanks so much for the follow. Specifying a table name attribute, a bit more specific. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Anderson. Thank you for the follow. Um, I hope you made it out of the matrix, Mr. Anderson. And Zoomable. The, the follower train is hot right now. Did somebody post something over there on Twitter? Thanks so much. I appreciate everybody. Is it on purpose that we don't hear Steve? I've, I've dialed back how loud Steve is. Um because he's gotten a little a little irritating at times. I've heard Steve say welcome 3,100 times here. If you'd like, I can dial Steve up a little bit louder. All right, let's, uh, let's give Steve just a little bit more, a little bit more uh, volume, just a smidge. Ta -ta, alert box. Look at this. This is the behind the scenes stuff. There's Steve. But I did that. That's me. Let's make Steve just a little bit louder. I have met 2% volume. I'll bring him up to 6. So I've tripled his volume. That's better. When it's just me, I think that's alright. Uh, I think I've re-entered the Matrix. I don't know enough about ASP to say anything useful, but it's interesting. Ah, no problem. We're, um... We're, uh... No, no, we're... So we're not actually doing too much around... Around actual ASP.NET development. We're doing more C-sharp and uh, application architecture concerns today. So, um, I hope what you see, Mr. Anderson, you find interesting. 
and you stick around, want to learn a little bit more or do some more or do some research on your own. All of this code is open source. So you're welcome to pull it down and play with it, break it, get a fresh copy to fix it, whatever you'd like. And uh, of course, we've got plenty of folks in the chat room happy to answer questions if, or, you know, direct you to other information if you're interested. Hey, there's our friend Shane Boyer. Good morning, Shane. So for models, we'll do DDD, asks Janos. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to rule it out. I want to start building a little bit of a, about these domain objects, and at some point I want to bring Julie back to talk about our implementation that we've chosen. Definitely break it a few times. Absolutely. Right? That's, that's, the, that's one of the great things about open source. Look at how somebody else wrote some code, learn from it, break it, and then pull down a new copy and override and say, oh, well, let's see what, exactly how I broke that, why it broke. Why doesn't it work the same way? Or maybe you're lucky and you'll figure out how to make it better and then you can send it back and say, hey, check this out, Jeff. This works better than what you had previously. So lots of opportunities to learn, and I really enjoy it. Let him code. All right, we'll get to it. Here we go. So I've renamed the project down here to CoreWiki Data Entity Framework. So all my Entity Framework stuff is in this project. Now, I know some people were saying they have problems when they put Entity Framework stuff in a project that isn't the web project. We haven't had that problem, fortunately. <laughs> had an idea for a blog post about lean entity framework design since it's smart enough that you don't need to declare all the database sets. Huh. That sounds interesting. Um, all right, so I have this over here. Now my interfaces for the repository objects, let me collapse this up a little bit so we can see them. So I still need to collapse it up. So these things are in my, my base project, and they're referencing these objects that are specific to Entity Framework but don't really exist in my application yet. So what I'm going to do, I believe... Now, should I name this folder that I put the, the rich models in? Should I name it... Do I name this domain, or do I name this models? Uh, just to, I assume that you can just move the migrations out of the web project and into the infrastructure project and they still work. They should. It knows where to find them. Right? Right now, this isn't going to build because these interfaces don't have... Right? They, they don't know how to access these objects yet. Um, if I have... If I leave this domain folder here and I start creating these classes, so I have article... Right, let's make this a public class. And this one takes a comment. So let's add a class called comment. Come on. Comment. I need to make that public. In which case, why did I use the snippet? And the last one is slug history. Public class slug history. And let me move these into other files. Cool. So they're out in other files. There they are. And that should actually satisfy all of these. Not quite. So if I put a using statement in here. Good. I need a using statement here. We need to fix this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not done yet with you. And this one. Get rid of that. Change this to core. Shane, can you believe how much this application has grown and changed since we started working on it? Back at Dev Intersection in Orlando. Oh my gosh. Um, we're not exactly doing DDD with this either. Not yet. This is more of a clean architecture, but we can we can bring in um, and we can start thinking about other data storage. I know uh, right from that first that first time Shane and I sat down and started talking about this, one of the first things that Shane said was, this would be really great with a document-based database. 
And we've gotten so far away from that. And I think it's going to be really cool when we can use a document-based database with this. So, um, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I don't mean to pick on you, but I'm just whenever I see your your avatar, your your Nick there in the chat room, I, I want to say Mr. Anderson. And I'm sorry. I'm I've got to apologize. I I don't mean to insult you, but I think it's amazing. EF Core will eventually support Cosmos DB. Yes, yes, it will. Um, but there's other there's other NoSQL databases that I'd like to be able to support also. Um, our friends our friends. Mm. Our friends who work on CouchDB, be great to be able to try CouchDB with this too. So, Neo Brendan, there we go. Um, so, I think I should be able to build just by making that one little change. Even though there's nothing in those domain classes, we're, it almost works. Almost. Look at this. Uh, let's go to that error list. Um, all right, so core wiki data entity framework DLL not found. Meh, that'll go away. Interfaces does not exist in core wiki data data. Yeah, I know. Um, I have a bit of that to solve, don't I? 21 errors. Here we go. Let's do some yak shaving here. Ready, team? Startup extensions. Let's replace. You know what I should do? You know what I should do? I should call some developers developers. Hey, Bryce910. Um, all right, so I'm going to copy that. I'm going to do a quick find and replace. I'm going to look for it, and I'm going to replace it with... Oh, come on. I wish it would just hop to the next dot. That's the wrong one. Uh, there it is. Replace all. Yep, do it. Four? Only four? Yes, it does. Try and build again. Red pill or blue pill? Why, oh, why didn't I take the blue pill? Shave that yak. Absolutely. All right. Now we've got a little bit of a problem. Adds a transient service. There's no implicit conversion. Right. Now my repositories don't match. That one will solve. Yeah, look at this. All right, so this is inside the Entity Framework stuff. This... We're all right. One. Come on. We need to add that reference. And I need to, yeah, the, okay. So now the next problem that we have here, what? No, that's fine. The next problem that we have is that our interfaces reference these really light and doesn't have anything in it yet, domain objects, but our implementations down here for entity framework don't match up. You're on a call with Code Rushed. Say hi to Mark for me. So, and Mark's got a blue and purple beard. Not quite rainbow like, like, <laughs> like I might. So, um, and just, um, just a quick update. I'm, I am still planning to do, and I'm, I'm working with the team. I have a couple folks from Xamarin. Friday, we're going to be doing a build your first Android app workshop. Um, I'm, I'm going to lock down the final details today. It's either go, today's the go or no go. We're either doing it or we aren't. But I've got three, I've got four folks that are interested in helping us throughout the day. We're going to learn how to build our first Android application. We're going to use Visual Studio and the Xamarin tools all completely free for you to use and open source actually the Xamarin tools are but Visual Studio and all the Android um, SDKs free to download and get started with um, and actually it's it's free to publish to the Android uh, store I thought 
We're going to focus on Android just because it's cheap and easy to get into. Anybody on any platform can get into it. If we did iOS, you'd have to be on a Mac, and it kind of cuts off a lot of folks who, who might not have Macs, who might not have um, the Apple developer program. So let, we can get started with, um, with that. Do you need to be able to run Hyper-V? Um, you need a little Hyper-V for the Android emulator, I believe, if I remember correctly. Just to be clear, the colors of, of, <laughs> the colors of a rainbow are defined. Yes, Roy G. Biv. And, and actually, we're, fill, we're gonna fill out an entire rainbow here with the, uh, with the graph here. We're already into the green, right? Red, orange, yellow, green. There's some blue in there and it gets into violet at the end. So, the emulator runs without Hyper-V. Uh, I think it having it just makes it run faster. There you go. New API requirements. Yes, yes. All right. So, that's what's coming up Friday. Like I said, we'll have a go, no go later today on that. Um, so, my subject matter experts, I'm, I need to reach out and ensure everything's good with them. And we're going to be sending out acceptance notices to all of the folks that are joining us for .NET Conf. We should see a little .NET Conf advertisement pop up in the corner there. So .NET Conf, full online, uh, completely free virtual conference, kind of like we're doing here on the stream, except we're going to broadcast for two days from Microsoft's Channel 9 Studios, uh, 8 to 5 Pacific time. There's a party we're going to have on Twitch at the end of the first day. Tune in to the Visual Studio channel that evening. We're going to give away prizes, all kinds of swag. There's going to be trivia. Uh, my friend Richard Campbell is going to join me as a co-host that, that evening. Uh, Scott Hanselman will be there. We're going to have a great time that evening. Uh, Talking.net, having fun, chatting, and uh, giving away some, some goodies. Tuesday, uh, the second day, it's Thursday the 13th at 5 p.m. 5 p.m., the conference doesn't end. The after party starts, and we're going to go 24 hours on Friday. I've never done this before. I've gone as far as a 10-hour stream. We're doing 24 hours live from six of the seven continents. I've got speakers in Australia, Asia, Europe, Africa, South America. We've got some Brazilian speakers. We've got North American speakers. It's going to be amazing. And I'm even making a phone call to see if we can get a speaker from Antarctica. If I can pull that off, I think we'll, we will boldly go where no Twitch has gone before. But that's the plan. That's what we're doing. That's what we're lining up. I'm going to be sending out those speaker acceptances this week. I'm really looking forward to that. But 24 hours live on Twitch. On uh, we're, all, we're going to be on Mixer also. And uh, you'll be able to see that on .NET Conf. It's going to be amazing. And I can hear Shane shaking his head. I can't believe Fritz is trying to do this. Oh, yes. It's going to be amazing. There you go. .NET Conf there in the corner. 12th through the 14th. A perf PR to the core wiki. Oh, man. Can, can I take a look at that real quick? Is that too much? Tiered compilation. What do we got? Startup increase, request per second increase. Really? Oh, and you brought in the, yes, the 2.1 tiered compilation stuff. Yes, yes, yes. So now... There's a couple changes you can put into your projects so that as C Sharp compiles your application, it should compile a little bit faster. So I'm guessing you just changed a couple project files to introduce the tiered compilation. That's not bad. We can bring that in. Uh, let's see here. Just to let you know, C Sharp Fritz, that Twitch won't support a single 24-hour stream now and requests that people do two 12-hour ones just for health reasons. Uh, we've got folks that are going to be swapping in for various hosts at hosting there, and uh, we're, we're going to be in good shape. It's not going to be me for the full 24 hours. Um, I'll actually get some sleep. But has the speaker lineup been finalized? We are really close. I think I, there's one more person we have to finalize and uh, I need to check my email. He may have actually responded to me overnight. 
a certain Australian. Let's see what we got here. Just taking a peek. Ba -da -da -da. Um, don't see an answer. I'll reach out and try and confirm. But uh, I have one person left that I'm trying to lock in, and then we're going to send out those acceptance. Um, somebody special. We'll see how that goes. Not for your marriage. No, it's not. But I'm not going to be... I'm going to be on the West Coast. So we'll be all right. We'll be in great shape. I'm not going to try and take the Concord and... and get ahead of it um so shane's got this one change i think this is okay to merge it's it passed the check so i'm going to do the squash and merge thanks so much for adding this it will make building the application easier cool so that's in the dev branch i'm not in the dev branch i'm in the new data branch here let me check in what I have here. More whip. Ah, come on. Cool. Um, I'm going to go back over to... There we go. Back over to my dev branch. I'm going to pull in Shane's change. There we go. And back over here. Get merge dev. And now I've got Shane's changes. And with a little bit of luck, let's see if we can refresh the scoreboard. I think we should see Shane pop up on the scoreboard. We should see... Um, da, 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 da. see if it makes much difference even though it's through the VSTS pipeline which I don't own what's that Janus is talking about I didn't see your question oh no you have a question for us um, would you still need a Mac if you could in theory get the binary assets from a VSTS build pipeline um, you know what I don't know the answer is yes says check digits you need to build on a Mac no matter what there you go um, core wiki top for the week. There you go, Shane with one commit. Fantastic. There you go, Shane's first place on on the week for core wiki. <laughs> All right, moving along. Um, so I can't build just yet. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Um, I still need to fix these references because right this is referencing this really weak article object um i couldn't go this long with no commits okay um so let's um let's make these article objects a little bit more robust right let's let's take our article here which has an id a topic a slug version published Right, and, and this is the instant, right? We did that work with uh, with John Skeet so that we have instants so that, right, we're handling time zone properly. And then we have the actual date time that we're saving. So here's, this is one place where we're going to immediately see benefit because we're not going to have this extra field we're carrying around. When John Skeet's code fails to compiler, the compiler apologizes. Yes. Yes, yes. Good, good quote there, Fritz Bot. Um, I name everything after myself. It's not ego. It's just the way it is. So I'm going to take the fields that are here inside my article object. I'm going to start by just copying these out. And let me go into the domain, and I'm going to paste the exact same things in here, and we'll start getting rid of stuff. Um, so I don't care about that id for the purposes of an article a domain object that's coming out um i don't really care for stuff outside of the domain to be able to set it um but i think i need to make it uh, get set so i'm going to leave that the way it is i'm going to get rid of this constructor for now 
Um, I'm gonna. All right, topic slug version. Um, that's fine. All right, here we here's our first one published and with instance. So I need nota time. Good. The author ID, and I don't want that to default. I think. Let's figure that. Let's see if we can get rid of that later. Um, same thing with version. I think we don't want that default. Let's put that business rule somewhere. No, wait. We're going to enforce business rules here. So I think that's okay to have that default so we always have a version. Um, I can get rid of this. Author name. Um, we do save the author name. So for right now, that's fine. Now this one, published date time. This gets loaded from that instant on published. I'm gonna get rid of that. I don't need it in my domain object because I don't actually publish and use it anywhere in my user interface. Captain Pepperoni, you look like the dude from Stranger Things. Which dude? Which dude? The, the, the sheriff? The guy in the first episode that we see drinking beer for breakfast? Yeah. Um, our content, yeah, that's got to stay there. And then our comments, our article history. These are links to other objects. Yeah, the sheriff. No, not the monster. I'm, uh, wrong button. Not the monster. Okay, um, do I really want comments and article? Article history doesn't exist here. It's a thing over here that has information about the articles. Hmm, I'm not sure. So I have article history objects that come out and they look pretty much the same. Let's start with copying this object. Back over here to the article. And I can satisfy this real quick by just pasting that in and then moving this to another file. Because I, I like one class per file. That's how we work here. So there's article history and that should, yep, it satisfies that. That's okay. View count, yeah, that's fine too. All right. Have I been told that before? No. No. And uh, let's see here. What's his name? I'm trying to remember the actor's name, and now you've got me looking it up. And I'm doing it on another machine so that I don't get nailed for any kind of copyright infringement. Is it David Harbour? Is that who I'm thinking? Yep, David Harbour. Yeah, maybe. There we go. Thank you, Welsh Ronaldo. Yeah, a little bit. I've got better facial hair. All right. Um, moving along. So I quickly solved this article history reference by... Um, just copying in the existing object. But that's not really the way that I want to solve this. Um, I'm going to get rid of these other things. It has an ID. It references an article. That's fine. I don't need an article ID here. John Snow, 989. Thanks so much for joining us. Winter is coming. Anyways. Uh, the author ID and the author name. Yeah. The version, yeah. Topic, slug, I don't need published. Uh, no wait, that was the instant. Yeah, I need that one. I don't need the publish date time. I do need the content. And then here's a from article copy over deal, that's fine. And I don't need that. Okay. So I have, I have an article history and I have an article. 
So I've got a richer object over here that I can add other features to and then decide later how I want to persist and, and put it into Entity Framework. And my interfaces are still pretty good. Yeah, I feel like I need to put a white outline around that black mug. We'll fix that. So, Captain Pepperoni, I'm guessing you like... You like pizza? Are you Italian? Just asking. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I happen to like pepperoni pizza. I've got to have it on gluten-free crust. But, uh... That's my problem, not yours. <laughs> Um, all right. Moving along. Good idea. I'm happy with any mug if there's coffee on it. In it, though. Here, here. All right. Um, the static from article should be replaced with auto mapper. I agree with you. Let's do auto mapper. Let, let's take a let's take a stream. Maybe it's Thursday, maybe it's Saturday, and let's focus just on AutoMapper on that stream because I think there's a lot of places where we can use AutoMapper and we'll do it over there and we'll see, we'll be able to reflect and show how much easier that goes. PR for dark theme, for, for mug dark theme changes. You know what, I should put those images in my repository, in my GitHub repository for the stream. I'm gonna take that as an action item. Um, put badge and emote icons in the Fritz Livestream GitHub repository. All right, we'll do that after. Um, what did Code Rush do? I don't see Code Rush in the chat room. Hmm. Moving along. Um, okay, so this is saying return await context.articles. Now, the the challenge, the kid from Stranger Things grown up. No, no, no. Um, no, they were saying I look like the... Oh, jeez. I'm getting back to the code. So re return await context articles. Now this should be returning a uh, not not a models article, but a domain article. So uh, why is it not like that one? Core wiki core interfaces. I thought we added that reference already. That fixes, but this is going to come back and say, yeah, the implementations don't match. So this, returning context articles, and it's returning an I enumerable of these. Cloudy stuff to this app. I agree, Shane. And hopefully introducing some of these interfaces, making putting these levels of abstraction in so that we pull back from Entity Framework and tightly coupled to our SQL Lite implementation, then we can do some other interesting cloudy things, I think. Turn the hat backwards and silent Bob. Is that better? I think that works. Quite part of the stream yesterday code rushed for the first time. Some mean JavaScript coding happening. Talking too much. Yeah, let's get back into this. So we're returning these article objects, which are data models article, but I want the domain model article, which has the same name. So I'm actually going to alias that using, let's say domain equals uh, core wiki core domain. So now I can say, this returns domain.article. And then I'm going to get, yeah, this is getting a little bit uh, grouchy because these articles are 
entity framework articles and not domain articles. So now we need to do a conversion between the two. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into this article object here. Now I could use the implicit operator here or the explicit operator here to say, here's how you take in that domain object and convert it into one of these. I could also add a, uh, add a method here, a static method that actually converts into this object. And I think that's what we're going to do. So let's create, and to, I think it was, was it Brave Cobra who was saying this? This, this is something that should be automapper. I want to write it out so that you see just how messy it is to start. Um, and then we'll fix it later. Article from, let's call this from domain. And this is wrong. Domain dot article, article. Okay. Now, da, 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 da. Yeah, oh shoot, I had it. Core.domain.article. Okay. Return new. So I need to do from domain and I also need to do to domain. Using x equals z.y.x always catches me during CRs, code reviews. I feel like if it's necessary, you've gone somewhat crazy with includes. Yeah, I'm not going to disagree with that. Dependency would go in the wrong direction. Right. Uh, we'll be keen to see the automatter, auto mapper episode then, as I've been doing it the hard way. Yeah, I've been doing it the hard way a lot as well. Um, so I want to core domain article. Now, if we're casting into that, right? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Return new article. All right. Author ID equals article. Yep, author ID. Next, author name equals article. Author name. Next, comments equals article. Comments. Oh! That isn't the same either. These are domain objects. They're not the same, so we're going to need to fix that. We'll come back to that. Content equals article content. Next, history equals. Now, that we really shouldn't have to pass around because... No, that's the way... Hang on. That is the way we are updating history. And that, once again, different object. Article ID, the next one, published. Now... Published was that instant, so I don't need to update that published date time because it will get updated appropriately. So I don't need to deal with that. It's being managed, right? The get on this is coming off of published, so I don't need to worry about published date time. But the slug, I do need to get. Ah, come on now. Topic equals article topic version version, view count, okay, easy, except for these two, and guess what we're going to have to do for those, um, how many mugs do I have, I don't have many, I've got, I've got a few that I, that I bounce around, I've got a blue one, a black one that says Microsoft Learning on it, and then I've got, I've got my works on my machine ship it mug that I've been favoring recently. But uh, my uh, my .NET Rocks mug shattered, and that made me sad. The current DTO refactoring was done to show how painful and verbose it is to do the mapping manually. Yes, could have just refactored straight to Auto Mapper and Mediator, but that wouldn't show the progress. The whole thing feels like making adaptive card. You know, Janescu, you keep bringing that up. And, and I know I keep pushing back. We're not there yet. Having never used AutoMapper and always mapped my objects by hand, I'd be interested in seeing what AutoMapper does. Why not have a quick for each with reflection to keep the class easier to modify? 
that's kind of what Auto Mapper does. Um, all right, so I'm going to go over to comment, and we'll fix comments next so that we can get this lined up. So comment, look at all this. Yuck. The comment object up here is, it doesn't have anything in it yet. So I need to get this line, I need to get the two items lined up. All right, I've worn this hat backwards enough. Get this model stuff done and I can do a stream where I send you a PR. Whatever. If that makes you happy. It's all on the Visual Studio channel. That's fine by me. So we're continuing to build out that channel. There's some really great stuff happening there. Some of our cloud developer advocate friends are... Uh, getting lined up and presenting content over there. You'll see Brian Clark present on the Visual Studio channel. You'll see our friend uh, Suze Hinton over there. Um, and we've got a few more folks that we're getting up to speed and presenting on that channel as well. Um, I'm really excited to get everybody up and running over there um, as we build out that Visual Studio streamer group. Um, really great content you're going to see over there. More talk show, more talk interactive like we do here. Uh, da -da -da. Okay, so our comment for right now I think is okay. I'm not sold on it. I'm going to get rid of this good new good on this because that should be coming from somewhere else. Okay. Um, and I don't, you know what? I don't need this ID article. In fact, let's change get so it returns article ID. That makes me feel better. That makes me feel better. All right. So back here in this object, now I need to set up that public static. Public static. This is a comment from domain core domain comment comment okay return new comment let me know if you've seen this before comment article author ID comment helps if he can spell this right What's next? That. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh yeah. Much, much better. Look at that. Uh, yep. Oh no. Look at that. That's so much easier to do because I've got the copy paste wired up. I don't need submitted date time because it gets built automatically. Done. All right. Comment.article. Eh. Dot. And I can't do to domain, right? Because this article is a domain article. I need to... I need to... That's a domain. So, oh. Uh, let's say article dot from domain. Cool. Um, removing the dependency on entity framework. Yep. Yes, interface to data backend. Also getting model objects to use across the domain that aren't entity framework ones. Yes. And these, these models will be able to put some richer interactions in. Right now they're still... They're still pretty anemic, is the term that you'd hear folks use. So now if I go back over to article, I can say dot... Um, comments is a collection. 
Now I'm going to run into this weird problem where the article that I'm bringing back and putting on the comment isn't right. That's going to be a problem. I'm going to run into a, a loop there. Behold, advanced copy pasting and IntelliSense skills. I've been doing this for a while. In fact, where is it? But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Very particular. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. Very long career of copying and pasting. You would never know it if I didn't tell you. So I'm going to tell you with my best Liam Neeson voice. And then I will find you. I will write code for you. And then I will kill you. Um, all right. Comment dot from domain C. Now that select doesn't exist here because... And actually, I don't want to... Yeah, I do want to use select. Boom! All right. Now, what doesn't it like about that? This is returning I enumerable core wiki to collect generic collection. You stink. You stink. That's a hash set. All right, so do I do it to hash set? Bazinga. All right. <sighs> We're doing it. Here we go. So history. So art, uh, right, article history is the same problem. So if we look at article history. So we have article history from article. We need to also have article history from... We need this one from the domain object. All right. Public, static, article history... From domain, Jeff can't type today. Core, domain, article history. Okay. Return new article history. Thank you. All right, here we go. Article, I don't really need to push back the article. What I need is the article ID for the purposes of this. Yeah. All right. History dot. Hmm. Article dot ID. Um, and we're gonna need a two domain going the other way. We'll get there next. All right, so we did article ID, author ID. All right, next, author name, content, cool, ID, yep. That one. Oh. Oh. It feels so bad. Did it again. This one. That. That. There we go. And semi. Cool. Uh, yes, we are currently storing in a SQLite database We're using Entity Framework, so we could swap out providers and write to SQL Server or Oracle or some other relational database really easy. There might be a little bit of tweaking around some of the migrations, um, but we're pretty close on all of that stuff. All right, so now if I go back to article, instead of saying article history, I can say dot select... Um, let's make history as an H. Uh, <laughs> article history dot from domain H to hash set. No. All right, that's fine. So now from domain here for the article works, right? Let me just double check here. I 
have a problem with that as well. We're going to need to get rid of... Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no. What did I do? That's fine. From the domain object, that's fine. Okay. Good. Do I remember correctly that you're from... No. Yep. All right. Um, so my article conversion now works. And if I go back over here, so to array async, the re this returns a collection of entity framework articles. I need to convert them to domain articles. Um, let's go down to one of these other ones where we're actually receiving one of those objects. Well, here's a Here's a good one. Get article by comment. So we're receiving... This should be a domain comment. There we go. So that satisfies the interface properly. So context articles include a.comments, single or default, AID equals, and that will work. That'll return, that'll return an article model. I need to convert it to a domain so this needs a little bit of help yet. Here we go. We're receiving... This is going to be a domain article. Now, we need to convert that into a Entity Framework article. So let's say article dot from domain article. And... We're going to do var ef article equals this. All right. And I can change this to ef article. And then we're going to return not that. We want to return a domain article. So here we need to convert it back into a domain article coming out from this object. So we're almost there. You don't need to include to query it, only if you need the comment afterwards. Um, where was it? Here. You're right. Actually, no, we do we do need the comments coming back because where this is being used, it's being put on screen with the rest of the comments. That looks strange when you switch it to a data model and then back to domain. Well, I'm returning the domain object. I'm I'm right, I'm forcing this into the database object. And then, yes, I'm casting it back to bring it back out so that I get the same object. I'm okay with that. The freedom that it gives us is worth, and the maintainability that it gives us is worth that that flip-flop. Is that Dago Chen? So. All right. Um, moving on. So what I'm seeing is I now need to have not just a from domain, I need a to domain. So that I think I can actually do as an instance method. So if I do public domain dot domain dot, it should be core dot domain, shouldn't it? Uh, article um, to domain. Return new core domain article. And am I, am, is this going to work? Is it going to work? Is it going to do the thing? If I can get rid of that, and this, and that, those, one of them, some of this, sure, and that too, okay. Now, this doesn't quite work yet. It's going to break. Oh, yes, it's going to. We're breaking a lot of things. 
Hmm. Um, we're almost there. So we need to push the comments back into domain object models. So I'm gonna go reach over here. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Public core domain comment to domain. Uh, here we go. Return new core domain comment. And if we just paste that in, how close do we get? We'll delete these. Mm, not too bad. Article equals article, right? Is that a thing? Yeah. Now, why doesn't it? Ah. Oh. <laughs> All right. So now I should be go able to go back over here and say not comment from domain. I should be able to say c dot to domain. Yeah, yes. Same. We need to do the same thing with the history. Just doggo. The Chen is only extension since doggo almost never works. Oh, okay. Where do you think it's going to break there, uh, Zarnal? What do you think? Let me know. All right. So here in Entity Framework, I'm going to reach into Article History. And we will do a two domain here. Public uh, core domain. Um, sure. So the question is, can you explain the benefits, what the benefits are about this double class? Two domain instead of um, Let me come back to you, Gareth. Um, so what we're doing is we're separating this out so that our database structure for, and these look pretty similar right now, but our database structures for the articles, article history, comments are um, completely separated. So if the database structure changes, maybe we're using uh, a NoSQL database like MongoDB or maybe we want to use SQL Server or Postgres or Oracle, DB2. Um, I was talking to somebody who uses DB2 with ASP.NET Core. Pretty cool implementation. Anyways, um, we'll have that flexibility and our website only knows about the domain objects and doesn't care about the data storage. All of that manipulation, all of that goo to get stuff into the database is a database concern that lives in this assembly, in this project, and our website can just think about website things and not be concerned with data storage. It'll just call into an object that it doesn't care where it came from called repository. Go save this, this domain object. And the repository knows, oh, well, that domain object, I need to convert it into uh, entity framework object, and then we know how to save it. So it's... It's a way for us to, to set up for longer term maintainability. Um, very good question. Um, and it's, it's something that I want to make sure is clear because it, it does look funny doing, doing this little bit longer bit of work here. I think I see what you're saying um, is do this notation. And, um, right, move this over here. Right. And, uh, I don't need the return. I, it, it that's nice and terse. It's very concise. Um, but the challenge is um, 
if we do need to do more with this, we're going to end up we're going to end up rewriting a chunk of of code, several lines, right? Um, that's why I kind of like using the the older style format here. Method group conversions in the link. Oh. Whoa. Um. Well, you can't just do dot to domain. You would need to take in the collection. Um, there's a little bit more to it than that. Let me finish this refactoring here. Uh, ta -da. Take that here. And yep. Get rid of this. Okay, now I have article ID. Article history does not contain a definition for article ID. No, what I need is the article. Now I need to do dot to domain on this one as well. And that should do. Comments dot select to domain. Um, I think I see what you're saying. Mm, it doesn't like it, right? No, I would need to change the signature of two domain. Um, nope, still doesn't like it. What? <sighs> the, the mobile phone scammers are uh, getting they're getting nastier and nastier um, I was just receiving a phone call from a uh, travel company no um, so yeah these aren't working I need to be a little bit more yeah Need to be a little bit more. Why isn't it? Right, so h, h dot to domain, and I can get rid of this, and go c, c dot to domain, and like that. Is this separation of concerns with MVVM? It's separation of concerns where this isn't MVVM. This is an application architecture. Um, Eladrix HD. What is the difference between ASP.NET and ASP.NET Core? I'll, I'll cover this quickly. Um, ASP.NET has been around since 2001, was built on .NET Framework, which ships and runs only with Windows. So ASP.NET runs on Windows servers, uses Internet Information Server, has four different um, user interface frameworks that Microsoft ships. Webforms, MVC, WebAPI, and SignalR. Really great technology. Um, the source code to all four of those is available. The latter three are all open source taking contributions. Um, but they're built on top of IIS and and because of how ASP.NET was originally built, it's it's very tightly coupled to IIS. There's some weird things that it does passing back and forth through memory into the Internet Information Server, web server. ASP.NET Core is the new framework that was started back in 2013, is, was when it was originally announced, 2013, 2014. Um, completely open source, front to back runs on a different web server called Kestrel that you can reverse proxy 
with um, with Apache, with Nginx, with IIS, the same way that you would Express from Node. And um, ASP.NET Core does not rely on that system web DLL that ASP.NET was built on. So it's, it's a lot thinner, it's a lot lighter, it's all packages where everything for ASP.NET former, the former ASP.NET, was um, DLLs that shipped and ran only on Windows. ASP.NET Core, completely open source, runs cross-platform. Windows, Mac, Linux is a lot smaller in deployment size and was built with performance in mind. Um, the latest tests for ASP.NET Core, just the web server running and, and spitting out uh, unique content, um, according to the Tech Empower uh, benchmarks, shows 7 million requests per second that the web server can provide. Now, that's the web server. That's not a database request and all the logic going back and forth. When you dial that in, the tests in Tech Empower still show, um, I think it's about 500,000 requests per second, including the database interaction. So that's pretty freaking fast. It's, it's the, the fastest... Um, web server that's built and managed by a commercial company um, that you that you can get commercial support for from that organization. Um, there's other ones that are experimental, that are open source, that run really fast as well, but I don't believe you can get commercial support from those. Yes, thank you, Gareth. There's a link to the Tech Empower benchmarks. So, all right, moving along. I'm not going to take too much more time here. I want to commit these changes and just make sure that it compiles here. I don't, it, I'm not even going to get it really compiling because these repositories, I'm not going to get all the way converted. So I have my two domain statements now in these. So if I come back to, let's start with the, you know what? The slug is easier. Let's, uh, oh, I didn't work on the slug. I worked on the article. All right, we'll finish the article one first. So starting at the top, get all articles paged, and this is returning domain articles. We're two array async, so we have an array of article objects. So we want to select those, that not, and we want to say uh, a dot to domain, and those a objects. It doesn't know what they are. These are articles. It doesn't even know it yet. So let's call this article. Now it doesn't know what that is. To array, you know what? Now why doesn't it like this? No accessible taking first. Oh, it's because it's a. Um, shoot, 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 shoot. It's because it's a task there. So we need to do the await. So let's say var articles equals that. And then I can say return article select articles. Good. Done. That one's resolved. In your opinion, in a company view, that what do they prefer? Node.js or ASP.NET Core? Um, and that's from Sag Nunes. So... Depends on the organization. There are um, there are startups that really prefer Node.js because they see they see JavaScript front to back. They're not paying anybody. They're not beholden to anybody, and they think that's a great idea. And that might be a great idea for them. However, if you look at the performance, Node.js doesn't perform as quickly as some of these other things. Node.js runs great in all the cloud environments, um, Azure, Google, Amazon. It, it works great in all of them. And that might, be, that might be great for your team for what you're trying to accomplish. ASP.NET Core runs great in all the environments, is significantly faster, like orders of magnitude faster. You'll get commercial support from Microsoft. And if you're a startup, if you're an enterprise, you don't want to be thinking about digging in underneath and supporting things below the framework that you're relying on. So those folks like having that enterprise support that they can rely on. 
even if you don't get the enterprise support, there's Microsoft support people that are watching the repositories and will give you fixes and help on things as they're being developed. So it depend it does depend on your requirements, as Janos is saying. I think ASP.NET Core is becoming more and more appealing because it's completely open source. You can change it, modify it if you need to, but that support is available for you if you need it. You're not required to buy anything in order to use ASP.NET Core. You can download ASP.NET Core, all of the tools to build with it, and you don't need Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code. You can run on your Linux machine coding in VI or Emacs, even Pine, I guess, and have a great time and deploy it to Apache and you don't have to tell Microsoft a thing. So it's up to you. Thanks so much to our new followers, uh, Micro Yoli uh, Segnunis, thank you, and DDBOI. Thanks so much. Speaking of which, wanted to try to download all the projects from Core. Couldn't do it. Can I step through? Um, you should be able to do it. They're all there. All the projects from ASP.NET Core? Yeah, they're all there. Um, GitHub.com slash ASP.NET. They are all there. Get total pick pages of articles. Yeah, that's fine. We're just returning a number there, so that's good. Um, <laughs> next one. Get latest articles. And this should be turning a list of core.domain articles. Um, uh, is that Enzith NYT? Thanks for the follow. And Julius Bartoloma. Thanks so much for the follow. I wanted the Git repositories. They have a meta package which points to the documentation. Um, no, no, go into the ASP.NET organization. You can see all the articles there. All of the, all of the projects are there. They're visible to you. Um, let me open a private window. GitHub, ASP.NET. There they all are. So go ahead, go download all of them. There are 147 repositories here. So, and I agree, let's stop at the Emacs VI wars. Not really if you drill down the meta packages. Um, I gotta, I gotta get through this. Order by descending, take, to list, async. Okay, so I need to make this another collection. And then return, articles, select, a dot to domain. Now, why doesn't it like that? Um... Uh, because it's a list to list. Yep, we are. I am almost done here. I'm going to finish this. Get total pages of articles. I thought. All right. Get article by slug. This should be a core domain article now. We're returning one here. So let's make this var article equals. Return article to domain. Done. Get article by comment. Once again, this is a core domain article. I'm going to copy that. There's the comment. Context articles include the comments, singular default async. Good. That is the one article. So var article equals. And then return article. Boom. Uh, rats to domain get article with histories by slug you seen a pattern here uh, <laughs> so that's going to return that one article article yep return <clears throat> oh come on Jeff Article to domain. <coughs> Oof. 
and this should be core domain article core domain article get article by id return article to domain done um, create article in history. I think we did this one, all right. Um, we're not. We don't want to return. Yeah, I think we're. Mm. Return ef article to domain. Good. Is topic available? That's a boolean. That's fine. Returning an iQueryable article. Get articles for search query. Uh, this could be messy. I'm going to put a to-do on this because we're not going to finish everything here today. Need to convert to domain objects. What do we got over here? All right. I have to wrap up. Exists. We're okay there. This is update. We're going to take core domain article. We're not attaching it. We need to convert that domain article to an EF. So let's call this var EF article mm, equals um, article from domain article. And we're going to attach EF article. Good. And that should work. All right. So I finished updating this. Most code ever written in my stream seems sees like you do a, a have done a ton of work. We have done a ton of work today. We absolutely have. Look at that. Eight more files updated. Yeah. So let's add all of those. Okay, um, and we have done a lot of work. We've we've refactored. We've tried to simplify all of this stuff so that so that we're not interacting directly with entity framework. Now, I only finished Article SQLite repository. There's two more repositories to update, and then we got to test this. But if I look at my error list now, right? I've now only got eight errors left, and it's in those other repositories. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to, first off, I'm going to look at my log, and I've got a couple of work in progresses here. Um, I feel like I should rebase one, two, three, four, five. I feel like I should rebase these five together. So let me do that real quick, and then I'm going to push my changes up. So I'm going to say git rebase dash i head tilde 5. Damn. That's a lot of code. I'm going to let all of these ones go. Except for these ones where it's work in progress. Way down here. And I'm going to squash those. Okay, so we'll squash all of those together so that it becomes a little bit simpler to manage and it doesn't look quite so messy in our, uh, oh crap, in our history. Um, so core wiki core models article. Uh, uh, core models, yeah, yeah, I get it. What are we looking at here? It's that, I want that one. Git add, bang. All right, and I do a git rebase, isn't it continue? To view and edit, list commands, next commands to do. Yep, continue. Uh, that's fine. 
and could not apply. What do we got? Both modified search CSHTML. I went back too far in my merge here. Core wiki pages search. This one. I don't see a conflict here. Oh, it's the C sharp file. Do, 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 do. What practice do you follow when using Git generally versus on stream here? Um, I'm supposed to mit commit more frequently. I have been. <laughs> I have been. Um, oh, crap. Not this one. Um, on get async, we should be using the DTO, this one. Not this one. And I can get rid of that as well. Um, merde. Uh, boy. You know what? I'm going to abort. Because I forget what the change is in there. Let me look back at the log. I just want the first... Let's get just the first... Uh, I don't want to go all the way down to there. Let's just get the first four. Rebase dash I head tilde four. What's happening is I'm merging across... Yeah, here we go. That's what I wanted. Uh, no, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. um, I want the first one. This one I want to squash. Uh, this one I want to squash. I'm going to squash in Shane's change. There we go. And we're going to... Let's get rid of a bunch of this. No. Um, refactoring for... Domain models. Fantastic. And now I'll get push. What practice do you follow when using Git generally? So I, I do normally have feature branches. I don't normally have this many feature branches l just lurking all over the place because it gets a little unruly. I like to focus on one feature branch at a time. When I'm done that feature, commit it, merge it to dev, and then destroy the branch. Because we've kind of bounced around to different topics, I've got several feature branches hanging around out there. Um, da -da 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 -da. So, yeah, they, there are git anti-patterns that you should be aware of. Do you push every commit just after you create? Create you lose the opportunity to organize your commits. And that's what I've done here, right? Is I've organized my commits a little bit. Are you brave enough to jump to any commit? Well, there's that too. Um, do you have long living topic branches? And that's a problem that we've run into here because we've bounced back and forth. This is a problem that we're running into. Um, I don't cherry pick. There is something definitely to be said for cherry picking. Do you understand when you read the commit graph? Yes. I do. Cure? Commit early, commit often, perfect later, publish once. Yeah. So, you can look through this later. But, I think we've we've uh, landed somewhere. And let's wrap up here, because we're just a little bit long today. Um, and I've actually got to get to a meeting in seven minutes. Um, so, we started merging... And, and, and organizing our code so that our project has some objects for actual domain objects that are going to be, we're going to grow and make those a little bit smarter. And we move those domain objects into our core project. Our interfaces for interacting with our data repositories, we placed in our core project as well. And you can see it right there above me. This way, we can have concrete and different instances of those repositories for different data storage mechanisms that we may choose. And uh, we've started refactoring our entity framework instances of those repositories so that they get 
that indirect reference as well and cast appropriately from our domain objects to our entity framework specific objects so that as as the database changes and who was it um, somebody was actually commenting in the chat room as the database changes you're going to need to update your domain objects or your mappings and you're right but that's a flexibility that i now have that means that my domain objects can behave differently or or behave the same across all database mappings and my web interface doesn't have to change just because the database changed so i can hide some of those database interactions in my domain models so it, it gives me that flexibility and maintainability for the long haul right if entity framework changes because of something in sqlite something in sql server that would affect my user interface and i want to protect myself from having to make that change all right um <clears throat> i'm not going to run a raid today but uh, i want to thank everybody for joining us this is really good we we accomplished a lot i'll be back on thursday um and if somebody wants to pick up and do some more refactoring here that's great but i'll see you then and I hope you join me on Friday. Friday, we're going to do our Xamarin Build Your First Android App Workshop. And I'll lock down and have final details for that later on today. And you'll see an event, the event updated here on the channel. All right. Let me go back to that theme music. My theme music, not that theme music. There we go. So thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I'll see you on Thursday. And we'll do some more refactoring on this as we simplify our interactions and we make our interactions with entity framework a little bit more maintainable all righty take care we'll see you then <laughs>